Welcome to SQL Server Analysis Services 101, Introduction to Analysis Services. This is going to be a very short video. I just want to talk about what is Analysis Services for those of you who aren't familiar with it. And interestingly enough, it actually covers two main areas. Most people think of it as only covering one area. So what is it? Well, the two areas that it covers are building multidimensional OLAP structures and creating data mining models. Now I'll explain more about both of those pieces coming up here, but just realize that these multidimensional structures are usually just called cubes. So that's the generic term I'll be using coming up. So cubes are multidimensional models that store data from one or more sources. And that shouldn't be too surprising. You've seen in the ETL portion, uh, or at least uh, in, in describing the ETL, that it often takes data from multiple sources and brings them together. Well, typically you store those in a star schema, uh, a relational data warehouse, and that becomes the basis for your cubes. So often you only have one source, but it's not unusual to have multiple sources. Uh, one example might be that you have all of your actual data coming into a relational data warehouse, but your budget, your forecast may be stored in an Excel spreadsheet for example, and so that you can pull in so that you can compare your actual versus your target values. Uh, so, so cubes are, uh, they're this data from potentially multiple sources, and they store that data, they can store it. Uh, how they store it physically varies, and that will be covered in later videos. There are actually uh, several different methods with analysis services. But the cubes store the data, and they can also store aggregated values or just aggregations. And these are sums of the base data at various levels. And those are calculated and stored ahead of time so that when users ask for them, they're returned instantaneously. There may be other items in analysis services cubes or well. This is not an exhaustive list, but you have uh, things such as calculations, KPIs or key performance indicators, translations if you need to do uh, multilingual uh, cubes and perspectives. So again these will all be covered in later videos. Now one topic that I'll bring up and probably not mention again or not very often is this concept of the UDM, the Unified Dimensional Model. There are some people who believe this is strictly a marketing term, others believe it is the end-all and be-all of analysis services. Uh, the truth somewhere in the middle. It really is a marketing term, but it does represent an important concept. Back before analysis services, just when you were building relational data warehouses and didn't have any kind of cube building engines, the, 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 there was an argument, should you build an entire enterprise-wide data warehouse, uh, one that covers the whole business and then break it down into separate data marts, or should you build data marts first and then roll those up into one enterprise data warehouse? And one of the problems with building data marts was that dimensions would often be different from one data mart to another, even if they represented the same thing. So the customer dimension might be slightly different from one data mart to another. And so the idea of conformed dimensions came around that, hey, we should have one customer dimension and all the data marts use that same copy or that, that exact same format. And so in a sense, the unified dimensional model encapsulates some of that concept. You often see a diagram uh, here like you see on this slide, which I've copied from the SQL books online, and they show data sources being relational databases or other kinds of files. So basically any kind of data source. And then they, it shows that flowing into the UDM and then the client tools accessing that, that UDM. Well, in the Microsoft space, the UDM is a cube in analysis services. So just when you see the term UDM, think of a cube. Now some people say that UDM is actually the design of the cube, and, and that's okay to, to look at it if you want to think of it as the conceptual model. But, but at the end uh, of the day, Microsoft's implementation of the UDM is a cube. And finally, the uh, second piece of analysis services is data mining. Data mining is just uh, the use of statistical algorithms to look for data associations or trends, some kind of pattern in the data, and one that may not be intuitively obvious. And there are different categories of these algorithms. 
They include uh, classification algorithms, which is for finding a discrete value, for example, predicting uh, who will purchase an item or who won't. Uh, regression algorithms are for looking at uh, multiple uh, values, and not just one single discrete, but a continuous value. And you see that a lot with, with forecasting time series uh, analysis and so forth. Segmentation algorithms attempt to cluster or group uh, different values uh, according to similarity. Association algorithms look for uh, relationships in the data, uh, things that, that uh, may be related and again may not be intuitively obvious. And then sequence analysis is used for looking at uh, a series of events and that's most often used at least uh, in today's world with looking at the flow on a website, the uh, different paths that people go through, a uh, clickstream analysis, if you will. So those are really the two main pieces of analysis services. Uh, most people use it only for building cubes, but it does have that very powerful data mining piece to it as well. So the cubes are there for performing very complex analysis. It, of course, it may be simple analysis, but it can become obviously very complex. And then, of course, the data mining looking for uh, trends and patterns in the data. So with that, we'll move on into looking at actually starting to build analysis services cubes.